Some of them will, will take your Polaroid photograph, others will try and sell you flowers, and others will have animals which they'll try and put with you so you can take, take photos of them. This is one of the animals that uh, the tourist police have just taken in. Um, and it's quite sad really, because what they do with them is they, they, they drug them to make them uh, docile so they don't bite you. These have apparently got quite a nasty bite. The owner of the creature Howard is holding has just been arrested for touting the animal on the streets and encouraging holidaymakers to be snapped with the drugged monkey. Basically what happened is the, uh, the owner of the animal will uh, pay a fine and possibly the animal will be taken into a local zoo. Over at the police mobile, another animal handler has been brought in to be fined and have their feature creature confiscated. This time it's a heavily dope lizard. These iguanas, they tend to put them on your shoulder and take a photo. Uh, but they, what they do is they drop them up, so they're very, very uh, docile. And I mean, if I just use the end of my uh, radio, you know, there's nothing at all. Nothing at all. Very, very... Should be moving about. It's supply and demand, you know, the tourists want it, so they're here. This cruel pet trade is widespread across Thailand. Very popular with drunken tourists wanting an exotic snapshot of their stay. And every kind of mammal and reptile is to be found on the streets. All just waiting for a tourist to stand alongside and have their picture taken. Oh, we can see uh, lizards, uh, snakes, uh, small dogs, you know, anything really. And it's, it's really sad because yeah, the, the animals uh, most of the time are not treated correctly. You know, even the snakes, they're, they're, they're very, very docile and very dozy, and it's just really sad. The owner of the monkey is given a grilling by the tourist police. On this occasion, the creature is not taken in by the cops. Instead, the animal is returned to its owner. She simply puts him in her bag and is sent on her way. But she's sure to be back on the streets touting the little monkey to tourists the next day. Howard knows the problem will never go away because of the demand. The tourists come here, they don't, they don't really appreciate what's happening with the animal, and they just think, oh, it's a fun thing to do while on holiday to get a picture with a snake or a lizard. But they don't really think about, you know, the, the, what, what the animal's going through. And, you know, when I'm holding an animal like this, it, it makes me feel quite sad, really, because, you know, I know what this animal's going through, and it's probably scared out of its wits at the moment, to be honest. I'm slicking my finger, that's gross. Coming up... As Judgment Day approaches for Lewisham drug dealer Marcus Hilton, we're given exclusive access to his trial as he fights the death penalty. You go to court, they say plead guilty. If you don't plead guilty, we'll give you the maximum penalty, which is the death sentence. It's the morning of drug dealer Marcus Hilton's trial, and he knows that what happens in the next few hours will determine whether he lives or dies. The judge has already said that if I didn't plead guilty, he would give me the maximum penalty, which is the death sentence. Daughter Caitlin looks on anxiously as her father arrives at the courthouse, escorted by heavily armed guards. I wish there was something that we could do. I feel helpless. It's very upsetting. They're not interested in character, they're not interested in your life history, it's just you do this, you get that. There's no fair trial in this country, I don't believe, unless you've got tons of money. I guess we are sort of resigned because of what the judge said. I thought, I mean, that, that doesn't give you much hope. It's, it's almost, it's like blackmail. This career criminal has tried every trick in the legal textbook to try and lessen his crime in the eyes of the justice system. I had possession of the tablets, yes, but the drugs that the police took, the law says that they need to test them, you know, for the amount of amphetamine that stays inside. Well, they only tested five grams out of the whole amount, you know, which means that the rest of it's, it's not admissible in court. My case is, uh, has taken almost two years to come to this. It's only two sentences that give me is the death sentence or life sentence. And we'll find that out in the following Tuesday. Hilton has reason to be fearful. A few days earlier, two Thai citizens were executed for drugs trafficking. 
the first to die under the death penalty for over six years. In order to deter people not to commit crime, it's, it not depend on uh, how, how tough uh, of the prison, but it is on how tough the sentence Inmates can spend up to 10 years on death row until a date is finalized for their execution. The inmate doesn't know about this until the officer comes to their cell. We let them write some letter to their family. And they can phone to their family. We let them uh, pray to the mom and then take them to the chamber, that chamber. And do the process of uh, execution. In Thailand, the death penalty is administered in the form of three injections. The first is a sedative, the second a muscle relaxant, the third a drug that stops the heart beating. Hilton has been in the courtroom for over two hours, pleading his case. And finally, he has his life-changing verdict. He has been sentenced to 50 years with no chance of parole. Officer, can you tell me anything? Any reaction? I don't know what to say. Hilton was spared his life, but will die in prison. Coming up next time. A trip to paradise turns into the ultimate tourist tragedy when a plane full of holidaymakers crashes on the party island of Koh Samui. I can still hear people screaming, help, help. I thought they were dead. Things get slippery when wet during Thailand's famous Sokram Water Festival, with drunken holidaymakers involved in a series of horrific road accidents. There have been people who've been drinking all day, driving around on motorbikes. You have no idea how bad this hurts. <laughs> And the situation hots up in Pattaya as a life-threatening fire breaks out in a busy part of town. This is one of the things we have to deal with. Just finished work and we just heard on the radio there's been a fire just up the road from where we're working. 